Hi, my name is Mike Shackelford with the WizardofOdds.com website, and I'm here with uh, the lovely Angela Wyman. And in uh, my previous videos, I discussed the black blackjack rules and blackjack strategy. In this video, um, Angela's going to ask me some questions that I frequently get about blackjack that haven't been covered in the other two videos. So what would you like to ask me, Angela? All right, I'm curious, when I walk up to the table, does it matter where I sit? One seat better than the other? Absolutely not. The odds are the same at every single spot. Some people don't like to play that last position or they're, they're superstitious about their um, where they sit at the table. Absolutely doesn't matter. Pick any spot you like. So is there any truth to that? Or it's just a myth that the player at the last seat can mess up the whole table? That is a 100% myth. Almost every time I sit down at the blackjack, eventually somebody is going to mention something about the third baseman has to protect the, the table. And if the third baseman doesn't play by the book, he's going to get blamed for making the whole table lose. That's absolutely a myth. Um, you could have the worst blackjack player in the world at third base and it doesn't make any difference to the odds. He's just as likely to help you as he is to hurt you no matter what he does. And, you know, I can see everyone out there um, in internet land shaking their hand going, I disagree with you on that one. But trust me, any legitimate blackjack writer will say the same thing and people only think this myth because they remember the times that some action caused the whole player, the whole uh, table to lose, but they don't remember the times that a bad decision saved the whole table. <laughs> so what should I look for when I walk up to a table? Um, when I sit down at a table, um, I, if I see a smoker at the table, I'm gonna sit as far away from him as I possibly can. Um, but if it's an empty table, I, I, you know, it, it depends. If I think that I'm just going to be playing by myself and no one's going to join me, I'll probably sit right here so I can look the dealer in the eye. If I think that it's a crowded situation and other people are likely to join me, I don't want to split a group of friends, so I'm probably going to sit at first base or third base. But it's entirely up to you where you sit. It's completely should be based on your own comfort. Well, what should I look for as far as odds? Does it really make that big of a difference if it's three, two, six, five? I mean, you see both of them. Absolutely. In terms of choosing the table itself where to play, you got to consider the blackjack rules, and it makes a huge difference. Now, if you remember just one thing from this video, if a blackjack pays six to five, turn around and walk the other way doesn't make any difference what other rules they give you. They can give you a list of a whole bunch of stuff you're allowed to do like they do at the Vegas Club. Forget it. Six to five is a sucker game. Don't play it. The only exception might be is if you're, if it's a, uh, a pleasure pit or a party pit and you have a lovely dealer, then you know if it's worth the additional entertainment value, what choice do you have? But that's the one rule that works against the player the most, six to five. After that, a good rule is if the dealer stands on a soft 17, that favors the player. Unfortunately, you don't see that very much anymore, but given the choice between the dealer hitting and standing on a soft 17, it's better if the dealer stands. Why? It's mathematically complicated, but basically, a 17 is not a very good hand in blackjack. You're better off if the dealer sits on his 17 than takes another card with the chance of improving it. Beyond that, another good rule uh, to look for is can you double after a split? Usually you can, um, but uh, with double deck games that can go either way. Um, so obviously if you're allowed to double after a split, that works your ways. Uh, another good rule, the fewer the decks, the better the odds. Um, for example, if you have, if the rules are otherwise the same and one table is two decks and one table is six decks, 
you're much better off to play the double deck game. Now, again, don't be fooled by single deck games that pay six to five. It's much better off to play a six deck game um, with three to two on a blackjack than a single deck game that pays six to five. And I think that the deal, the, the casinos are um, trying to, um, shall we say, I don't want to say deceive, but I, they always have a sign that says six to five blackjack, I mean single deck blackjack, but then they don't mention the six to five on the table. Always look to where it says blackjack pays. Always look for this three to two. Um, fine, uh, another two things is it's good if you can surrender. Most players don't surrender anyway, but you should when the odds favor it. Um, the, there, are, there are several situations where you should surrender, but the one, if you just remember one, surrender 16 against 10. And it's good if they let you do that. Finally, re-splitting aces. You split aces. Some places give you one card for each ace no matter what. Some places will deal them face up, and if you get another ace, you can re-split it again. It's good if they let you do that. Now, you may be in a situation where um, there's conflicting rules, for and you don't know. For example, maybe the casino will have a six-deck game with surrender, re-splitting aces, and um, double after a split, or a double-deck game that has double after a split, but not surrender or re-splitting aces. Um, then, my website, um, indicate it has a calculator. You put in any set of rules and it'll tell you the house advantage. Um, so when in doubt, go to my website, look for the blackjack calculator, put in the rules, and it'll tell you the house advantage for those rules. Well, it seems like no matter what else they offer, every table has the giant insurance ribbon on here. When should I take insurance? Absolutely never. If, if there's um, a second thing I want you to learn from this video, never take insurance, period, no exceptions. And that includes <laughs> if you have a blackjack and the dealer's showing an ace, the dealer will say even money, and there's always a player who goes, even money, what's that? And the dealer will always say, oh, it's a guaranteed winner, um, win even money. No, it's better to win, it's better to have the chance of a blackjack paying the full three to two than a sure even money. Wow, so never take insurance, don't do even money, know when to surrender, find a table with all those rules. <laughs> yes. Fair. Do you think there's any difference between a face-up and a face-down game, or is it just purely preference? It's, it's purely preference. Generally, they're going to deal the cards face-up in a shoe game and face-down in a single or double deck game. Mathematically speaking, it doesn't make any difference how they deal the cards. That should be according to your own preference. So I've got a question the casinos might not like me asking very much, but I know everyone's going to want to know. There's a lot of books about card counting out there and a lot of different strategies. Which strategies of card counting would you recommend? Or which do you think actually have a chance that uh, you can make some money off of? Good question. Um, before I answer that, let me say that card counting is not as lucrative as movies like Rain Man and, and um, 21 make it out to be. Um, it's it's hard and it only gives you a very thin advantage. Um, however, you, if you accept that anyway and you're ready to learn how to count cards, first you got to memorize the basic strategy. No ifs, ands, or buts. I've seen so many so-called card counters that didn't know the basic strategy and they are playing a losing game because it's much more important to play right basic strategy than it is to count cards. So only after you've memorized the basic strategy cold, perfectly, then should you even open up a book about card counting. Now there's lots of card counting strategies out there. And the more complicated the strategy, the more powerful it's going to be. A lot of the older books on blackjack really pushed the um, complicated strategies like, like Revere and Ken Houston. Um, they really pushed the difficult strategies to try to get every, every um, tenth of a percentage of advantage as they could. However, the thinking today amongst um, uh, blackjack writers is that 
it's not worth the additional trouble and most counters are probably going to lose more um, due to mistakes made with these complicated strategies than they gain from the extra power. That said, the two most common card counting strategies out there are the high-low and the knockout. The high-low is an old card counting strategy going back to the 80s that simply treats twos through sixes as low cards, tens and aces as high cards, and as you're playing you keep a running count as you see the cards, then you have to make an adjustment to how many cards are left, and then you play your cards according to what you have, what the dealer has, and the count. I know it sounds hard, but just adding and subtracting one at a time, it's not that tough. It's, um, if you're dedicated, it, it's something that 95% of people could do. Another strategy that's a little bit easier, in fact, perhaps even significantly easier, and almost as good, in my opinion, is called the knockout count. That instead treats a two through a seven as a low card and still tens and aces as a high card. So what you're gonna see is this gradual increasing of the count because it's not a, what's called a balanced count because there's more small cards than big cards. And once the count reaches past a certain point, then you start increasing your bet and on certain hands, you're gonna play it differently. The, the good thing about the knockout count is there's no what's called a true count conversion. You don't have to worry about how many decks of cards are left to be played in the deck. You just go off of what's called the running count. And finally, if those are um, too complicated, I have a real easy card counting strategy on my website called the Ace Five. It just tracks aces and fives. You count fives as plus one, aces as minus one, and you keep a running count as you go and if the count gets high, meaning that a lot of fives have gone out, which are bad for the player, and aces left, which are good for the player, then you start betting more. It's not going to give you much of an advantage, um, but it's certainly going to at least get the odds in your favor, and it's not that hard. All right, so before I can even start to learn card counting, though, I have to perfect basic strategy. Now, while I'm trying to learn basic strategy, in every gift shop in Las Vegas, there's those little plastic credit card sized strategy cards that I could tuck in a pocket or my wallet. How come they're not all the same? If you really look at them, the cards will vary from casino to casino on what you should do. Good question. And um, the reason the cards change from one to the other is because the rules are not always the same. Um, so you, of course you're referring to the basic strategy. I've got it on my own business card here. Um, now let me say that no matter what basic strategy you follow, you're in good shape. You're way, way ahead of the curve. Um, the only places where they differ is in certain borderline situations. A common one is you have a total of 11 and the dealer's showing an ace. If the dealer hits a soft 17, the odds favor doubling that. If the dealer stands on a soft 17, um, the odds favor hitting it. However, it's, it's um, a very borderline play, and let's say you memorize the strategy for the dealer standing on a soft 17, so it says to hit that, and you find yourself at a game where the dealer hits a soft 17, don't freak out, don't say, oh, I gotta check Mike's site for this basic strategy, trust me, it's, it's okay. Just play the basic strategy you know. If you know just one basic strategy, um, you're already better than 99% of blackjack players out there.